Hey guys, welcome back to the second time Lucky Mining channel. In today's quick video, I wanted to talk about self-custody. Now, if you like the crypto content, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of plugging my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last couple of weeks, it's absolutely been wild in the crypto space in the last couple of weeks. If you're not familiar, we are in a bear market. And what we typically see in a bear market is a lot of the crypto companies goes through some hard times, similar to us GPU miners. Now, what has subsequently happened is FTX has filed for bankruptcy. And, you know, if you're not familiar, that has or is a massive exchange in the crypto space. So it's a centralized exchange. Now, with that uh, exchange going bankrupt, there's a lot of people that potentially will be losing their money. Now, it's in times like these, or let me correct myself, any time is a good time to talk about self-custody, but specifically in this space, especially for all the newcomers in the crypto space. Now, if you're as old as I am, um, potentially you have lots of money and learn some hard lessons. And that's why I feel comfortable to, to speak to people about the topic of self-custody because I've learned, unfortunately, the lessons the hard way and I lost some money along the way. Luckily, you know, that has been a long time ago. I've learned my lessons. I do a lot of things differently, but I thought I'll talk about some of the things that you can do to try and mitigate your risk, not just now, but in the future in case more of this is going to happen. And make no mistake, more of this will happen in the future. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is if you're in the crypto space, make no mistake, I do see a place for a centralized exchange. I'm not sure about you, but most of my expenses are still in dollars, unfortunately, and I can't specifically pay in crypto. So what does that mean? It means that my day-to-day -day living expenses, I need to use actual dollars. And that's where I see the specific point or the purpose, or at least in my opinion, what I use a centralized exchange for. It's only for a on and off ramp to either get my dollars into crypto or my crypto into dollars. And that's the purpose, or at least in my opinion, that's where I see the purpose of a centralized exchange. At no point do I see you need to keep a hell of a lot of cryptocurrency specifically on exchange. Now, there are people that do day trading and stuff like that, but you know, that's not something that, you know, I fall into. But Specifically, in my opinion, you know, even though that you get a username and password, that doesn't mean you have got self-custody of your crypto on a centralized exchange. Now, to mitigate your risk, you should only really have crypto, or at least in my opinion, uh, no longer than a week or maybe a little bit longer, but uh, it's only stuff that you want to either on-ramp or off-ramp in the crypto space. And that's really what I see a centralized exchange for. Now that we know we shouldn't be keeping a lot of our crypto on centralized exchanges, where the hell should we be keeping it to keep it safe? And that's really where the self-custody comes in. And at least in my opinion, you know, I really don't care where you keep your crypto as long as you've got self-custody of it. Now, what do I mean by self-custody? I mean that you own the private keys or the seed phrases for wherever you've got that crypto currently stored. And that's the main principle. I'm not sponsored by any company or anything like that. Um, you know, I couldn't care less, you know, if you're using cold storage or this application or what, as long as you've got custody of your crypto, it's off an exchange and you own and you're keeping safe the private keys or the seed phrases, then I'm super happy. That's the most important thing that I want to get out of this specific video. Now, what are some of the tools that you can use to keep your crypto safe? And at least in my opinion, the best thing to use is a hardware wallet. Now, something like this, and this is a Ledger Nano S. I don't use this one anymore. This one is coming back from my 2017 lessons that I've learned, but a hardware wallet, something like a Ledger, um, or a Trezor or any one of those devices is a great way. Not only is it a physical hardware device, but it's something that's always kept off the internet. And that's the main thing that I wanted to get to here is, you know, if you use a device like this, make sure that you backed up the seed phrases. So something like this comes with seed phrases. Make sure that you lock up the physical device in a safe or in a safety deposit box or wherever you want to keep it safe, but have the private keys um, or the seed phrases specifically for that separate in another area, just to make sure it is safe. 
the big thing again as i mentioned it's most of the time off the internet it doesn't really help you know if you've got this thing connected to your computer the whole time to see what's going on now um you know talking about the ledger here as i mentioned i don't specifically use this anymore this is an old device uh, which is there's nothing wrong with the old device but uh, the size constraint on the device makes it so that, you know, if I want to transfer crypto in and out of this, I always have to add an application and remove an application. So that's a little bit of a pain. Uh, the Nano X is a little bit better. But again, I couldn't care less which hardware device do you actually use. Now, the next thing that you will probably ask, and rightfully so, if you're a GPU miner like myself, you would notice that not all of the coins are supported on these hardware devices. And that's the, a pity, unfortunately, you can harass these companies to see if they can add support for your favorite GPU mineable coin. But at least where it is or where it stands today is uh, on this specific ledger, uh, it doesn't support all of the coins that I mine with my GPUs. Now, what do I mean by that? Stuff like, um, you know, Ergo, Casper, um, Malcoin, if you're mining Malcoin. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of coins, specifically also in this space in the bear market where a lot of people are spec mining. There's a lot of coins that is not supported on a hardware device. Now, what do we do or at least what do I do in that specific space? Now, again, there's lots of different options here, but, um, you know, at least what I advocate is having multiple application wallets. Um, and what do I mean by that is get yourself something like this, or maybe not exactly this, this is a bit overkill and this is not what I necessarily use for, but this is the, the only little computer that I've got. But um, you know what I advocate, or at least um, you know what I suggest is getting a little mini PC, installing a software wallet. And again, it's up to you which software wallet do you want to do or use. Um, you know, I like using Zalcor because it supports a lot of coins, but you can use Exodus or whichever wallet that you would like. But again, you know, treat this device as like a hardware wallet. You can still have your address, um, but you don't need to log in to the wallet at all times. And again, what I suggest here is having multiple of them to make sure that you keep them safe. Uh, but ultimately, at least have one that you don't log in every day. Similar fact or same thing as I mentioned here, just make sure that you've got the private keys, they are backed up and they are saved or written down, put in a safe and put far away. Now, a caveat here is make sure you don't back up stuff on the internet. So stuff like Google Drive or OneDrive or stuff like that, yes, potentially you can, um, you know, save your private keys and stuff on Google Drive. That's not something that uh, necessarily I would do. I'm a little bit paranoid. Um, you know, I like keeping stuff in paper and locking them up in saves. But again, that's just me. But the big point that I wanted to make here is make sure you get some sort of device that is your wallet device that you make sure that you've backed up and saved the private keys and you know exactly where it is. It's stored, it's secure. Now, not everything that is GPU mineable today is either supported on the hardware wallet or on something like Exodus or Zalcor. Now, what do I specifically do in that case? And good examples of that is something like Casper or some of these other speculative coins. Now, specifically in my case, if it's not on Zalcor, I just stay away from the coin. Um, you know, I've done lots of speculative mining in the past. I've done all of these core wallets and trying to remember all of their stuff. It's just not something that I am interested in anymore. So as long as something is added to Zalcor, that's sort of when I start mining. Yes, I do know I am losing, uh, you know, the opportunity of spec mining if it's like that, but that's just what I want to do. Now, uh, that doesn't mean you need to do what I am doing. Uh, you know, if you are or you are speculative mining all of these things, what I would suggest is at least have a look at the hobbyists or uh, the Mining Kings video. They've got a good video around, you know, how they're using virtual machines to keep their different core wallets specifically safe. So I'll leave a link in the video description in case you are interested in that. But again, it's a similar principle to having a little computer here. In that case, I've just got a server um, with little VMs um, and each VM is dedicated to a specific core wallet. So again, same principles, make sure that you've got the private keys and everything specifically backed up. 
That's it for this one, guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.